Hello, happy people. Hope you're having a great day today. Today, we're taking a look at the 1954 short story by Margaret St. Clair called Short in the Chest, which is in this collection, uh, the best of Margaret St. Clair, uh, that we've been doing a deep dive into. Um, as you can see, it's about 10 pages uh, in my collection uh, and was published in Fantastic Universe, according to the editor here uh, in this short story. Um, this is nine years into Margaret St. Clair's life, a uh, uh, professional life rather, um, as she got started publishing uh, in the pulp era for pulp magazines in 45, so this is 54. I'm sorry, this is, yeah, 54. Um, so that way you get an opportunity to kind of see her starting to get uh, more uh, better at her writing, more professional in her writing, that sort of thing. Um, by now, she's written hundreds of short stories, um, and this collection has all, only gotten nine years into his career. And as you can see, there's not that much left. I've gotten probably through about two thirds of the short stories that are in here. Got about six left after today's uh, short story, Short in the Chest. Uh, short in the Chest um, is set in the future uh, and during the Cold War uh, when the good guys have captured Mars and the bad guys are about to capture uh, Venus um, and have built uh, democracy in one place and communism in the other. And our, our point of view character um, is a Marine I'm on the side of, of democracy and she is uh, dealing with some issues uh, and there are these uh, 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 robot-like characters um, that are uh, is also a major character too that she's going to be talking to and then getting advice from in, in order to deal with her problem. Now this is only about 10 pages long, uh, but it does have a lot of military stuff in it. Or she's going to be interacting with uh, a lot of other things. Um, but I wouldn't say that even though our, our point of view character is a Marine, that this is specifically in the military science fiction uh, subgenre of science fiction because nothing battle-wise happens. It's just conversations and decisions and then actions. Um, and then we'll find out what actually happens. Um, and and that, that's not a huge, uh, uh, for in, to my mind, of, of uh, uh, entry into the military science fiction genre. Uh, because there's nothing that happens uh, that's an action oriented like there's no battles i feel like that most military science fictions um need to have like you know like battles right in order to sort of have the military science fiction aspect of it uh, and this is just conversations and actions um, and plot um there's also not a lot of plot but then it's only like 10 pages long it didn't even take 20 minutes for me to knock it out last night for the first time um, and we're deep now into my deep dive into Margaret St. Clair's uh, book um, and, and into her career. Uh, I have published, uh, you know, the reason why I'm initially doing a deep dive into her stuff is because she was listed on Gary Gygax's Appendix N, uh, which was published uh, in the first Dungeon Master's Guide of the first edition of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons as a place uh, to go to for inspirational reading, uh, for places to go to if you're interested in taking a deep dive in the things uh, that influenced uh, the first edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and through that, and Gary Gygax's uh, take on it, uh, and through that, modern fantasy, because modern fantasy has been hugely influenced. Um, and the genre today is, has, has owes a big debt to the advanced Dungeons and Dragons, particularly the early, early parts, from creatures that appear in video games, comics, movies, uh, and more, right? We owe a big debt uh, to that first edition. And you can find out exactly who uh, were the people in Appendix N. So it's my goal to read at least one thing by every author listed on Appendix N. And I've done a lot of deep diving uh, into that for this channel. Um, and Margaret St. Clair is somebody who's mentioned. Uh, I did a first short story by Margaret St. Clair, The Man Who Sold Rope to the Knowles, in, an, in a collection that was published earlier uh, last year called 20, in 2021 called Appendix N, which I've done a deep dive into. And that was my first Margaret St. Clair short story. Uh, and then I wanted to follow that on. Uh, this collection, uh, Best Of, has so far just been all science fiction with one horror story standing out. I was kind of hoping for more uh, fantasy, uh, but that's not the first time it's happened. Um, uh, with me when I've done a deep dive into somebody on, on Appendix N and then have into some of their best stuff, their best well-known stuff, and it's been science fiction, and this has been the case too, and that's fine. You know, I, I do reviews of, of, of three genres, fantasy, science fiction, and horror in this channel, so I'm not upset that this has been science fiction so far. Um, you know, it's still cogent to what I'm doing. 
Uh, and now we're doing it. We've done a deep dive into Margaret Sinclair's stuff. Um, so there you are. Have you read this short story? Uh, I gave it a, I'm giving it a seven out of 10. It still has, it's, it's better written. I think some of the earlier stuff that we read uh, a few ch short stories ago, uh, but there's less, more talking and less doing in, in this. Um, so I'm still giving it a seven out of 10, uh, just like a lot of my previous stuff is. Uh, have you read it? What'd you think of it? I would be happy to engage you with it further in the comments below, whatever your take is. If you enjoyed this video, why not hit that subscribe button? There's gonna be a lot more of these to follow. And then finally, I wanna thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it in and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. So thanks again and have an amazing day.